so quick for such a small animal. Oh, look, it's tidying up now. Oh, I see. It must have to clear up all the tracks so it can run faster. because their long noses look a bit like an elephant's trunk. Oh, these are all brilliant facts for my talk. Okay, stay there, don't move. I'm just gonna measure you with this. Two meters? Well, that's huge. Oh, I'm still tiny, aren't I? Don't worry, I'll use my gizmo instead. Oh, stay. Right. Ah, that's better. Ten centimetres. About as long as a pencil. Right, now for a few photos. Smile. Here we go. Say cheese. I got everything I needed for the talk before the elephant shrew whizzed off again. Whoa. Hey. Sounds like the elephants are back. In a minute. They're not elephants. It's a herd of stampeding animals. Quick! Close. Magenta Andy, your talk is due to start in 10 minutes. You need to get back to Safari World as quickly as you can. Okay, Jen, I've got everything I need. I'm on my way. Oh, right. Now, where is my Safari Mobile? Oh, look! Thanks, Elephant Shrew! Back to normal size. It's a long way down. Can I grab a lift? Oh, great. Tree shrews are amazing acrobats. See what I mean? They've got big brains considering they're so small. Excuse me. Which means they hardly ever make mistakes. Luckily, <laughs> brilliant! The tree shrew has found lots of mangosteens. Oh, there's a good one over there. Yes, this is exactly the sort of mangosteen that I need. What was that? <laughs> It's a bearded pig! Hey! I had my eye on that one! Something tells me that these pigs don't want to share. Another mangosteen tree. Look, the pigs have eaten everything. Luckily, I'm with the best fruit finder in the forest. Come on, let's go. Yes, I've made it. 
According to my scans, you're flying above the Rocky Mountains in North America. Great. Now all I have to do is find some mountain goats and let them lead me to some salty rocks. Oh, good luck, Andy. Thanks, Jen. Going into land. This looks like a nice spot. see for miles and miles here. Can't see any mountain goats, so. What was that? There it is. It's a pika. Pikas live on rocky slopes and they eat flowers and other plants. Just like mountain goats do. Hmm. I reckon Wherever pikers go, mountain goats probably go too. I'm going to follow them. Hold on. It's another piker. Making an alarm call. And it seems to be looking at me. I think I better shrink down so I don't scare anyone. To the size of a piker. Great. Now, where did that piker go? <laughs> Wait for me! <laughs> oh, that must be its burrow. It's a golden eagle. That gives me a brilliant idea. Activate shrink mode. Great! Come on! Uh, excuse me, Mr. Eagle. I couldn't hop on the next flight, could I? Snow leopard go. Hmm. Nope. No sign of it anywhere. But if I'm going to stand any chance of finding that snow leopard, I need to be bigger. Gizmo, back to normal size. Great. Now, if I can find that snow leopard, maybe it will lead me to Jen's camera. A snow leopard's fur is part white, part black, and part grey. It blends in really well with all the rocks and the snow. There's one. Oh, it's a long way off. But if I just float on my back, maybe the current will carry me all the way. Uh-oh. It's a yellow build kite again. Oh, that was close. Unlike the island, it's still miles away. Oh, but it looks like help is on its way. It's an adult sea turtle. Come on! Do you mind if I hit your ride? Off we go! Now this is what I call travelling in style. We've made it! 
Thanks for the lift. What's this? Oh. Seaweed. Right. Now to find me a penguin. I've not just found one penguin. I've found hundreds of them. And they're all wandering around happily, even in the roasting hot African sun. One of the ways that penguins deal with the heat is to keep their mouths open, and that stops them from overheating. And of course, the sea is always nearby if they fancy a cool, refreshing dip. Not all the penguins are able to go for a swim, though. Lots of them are sitting on eggs, like these ones. They need the temperature to be just right. So this can happen. It's hatching. Hello, little fella. Welcome to the world. Hang on. So if the eggs are hatching and they're healthy, this must be the perfect temperature. I'll take a look. It says 35.6 degrees Celsius. That's the temperature we need to raise the penguin enclosure to back at the park. I need to get back to Safari World as quick as I can. See you later, penguins. The Safari Mobile is miles away on the other island. I wish I could move through the water as fast as these penguins. Hang on. The seaweed. That gives me an idea. There it is. Release ladder. See you later, crabs. To the Caribbean. Whoa. That was close. <laughs> Dropping you off on a Caribbean island. You should be able to find a shell for the hermit crab there. OK, Jane. I'll be as quick as I can. Drop me down here, Jen. Oh, great. Well, at least I don't have to walk to the beach, which is just as well. I'm tiny. What's that? It's an empty shell. Well, this is an ideal replacement for the one I broke. Oh, oh. It looks like this little fella wants it too. It might be a bit too big for you, though. Maybe that hermit crab will be a better fit. Or that one. Hey, there are loads of them. This shell is a really big deal for the local hermit crabs. But how are they going to decide who gets it? Huh? What are they doing? Ha oh, this is amazing! All the crabs have lined up in an orderly queue. The biggest this end, and the littlest over there. How clever is that? Oh, I don't want to push in. I'll join the end of the queue. Excuse me, coming through. <laughs> Pardon me. Uh, room for one more. Hmm. I wonder how this works. Oh, I see. The biggest one is moving into the spare shell. And another one is using his old shell. And that's why the rest of them are queuing up. All to swap shells at the same time. Incredible. Oh, last but not least. Come on, off you go. Oh. Which means there's one shell left for me, and according to my gizmo, it's the perfect fit for our hermit crab. Oh, that reminds me. I need to get back to Safari World. But first, I need to get me and the Safari Mobile back to normal size. Right, now it's time to find out how lions deal with flies in the wild. 
The only problem is, I don't see any lions anywhere. But I can certainly hear them. Come on. Cubs! Oh, look at them. They love tumbling around, but they're not just having fun. Play fighting helps them learn how to hunt and to fight if they need to defend themselves. The only thing is, I need to find out how lions fight flies, not each other. There aren't any flies around here. In fact, there are hardly any lions either. Oh, the cubs don't like to be away from their family for too long. I think they're off to rejoin the pride. I know, I'll follow them. Nope, better still, I'm gonna join them. To the size of a lion cub. Great, now I should fit right in. Oh, wait for me. Now this is what I call traveling in style. Thanks a lot, buddy. Oh, look who it is. Oh, it's their mum. And what a great mum she is. Look how she's keeping the cubs clean by licking their faces and paws. Well, that's going to help keep the flies away. Swishing their tails helps too. I said swishing, not biting, little one. Whoa, don't yawn too wide, Mum. You don't want to let the flies in. Wow, well, there are lots of trees around here. But according to my gizmo, none of them are K-pop trees. Hmm. I think I'm going to go for a little stroll. See what I can find. <laughs> What's that? It sounds like someone's laughing. <laughs> oh, it's a baby chimpanzee. And look, his dad's tickling him. <laughs> How cool is this? Look at them. They're playing hide and seek, just like we do. There's lots more chimpanzees over there. Come on, let's get a closer look. Ah, look, there's a whole troop of chimps and they're out searching for something to eat. See that chimp with a straw in its mouth? Well, that straw isn't food. He actually uses it as a tool to catch food. He sticks it into some rotting logs and then eats the termites that jump onto the straw. How clever is that, eh? Oh, it looks like they're moving on to find something else to eat. I'm going to follow them. Hopefully, they'll lead me to some K-pop trees. And if I shrink down, they'll hardly even see me. The size of a baby chimpanzee. Perfect. Now I'll fit right in. Wait for me. Yes, it's the grizzly bears I've been looking for. Amazing. Don't worry, little buddy. You'll be safe here. I'm going to go follow them. Hard to keep up. They seem to be heading towards those trees. Wonder what they're up to. Mm. Finally, I've caught up with them. What's it doing? She seems to be rubbing us against the tree. Oh, now the cubs are having a go. They must be itching. <laughs> Hang on, look. There are others doing it too. How strange. Well, this is great to watch, but, but why? Of course. 
They're using the rough bark of the trees as a kind of hairbrush. That's what's helping them shed their winter coat. So what we need in the grizzly bear enclosure back at Safari World are trees with rough bark. The scratchier, the better. All this scratching is making me feel itchy. I've got time for one little back rub before I go. Oh, that feels great. <laughs> 